Hey, thanks for watching my video for my new 40 by 60 pull barn post frame construction. Hey, I'm just making a video today because when I was looking to have one of these built, um, it was kind of hard to find information. It was kind of hard to get anyone to actually give you any prices on, you know, what it really cost. And uh, so this is 2023. I had the job bid in September 2021 it's uh march 2023 right now but anyway hey um if you subscribe to my channel i've changed the name to sharp jagged rocks if you haven't please like and subscribe you never know maybe i get monetized maybe i'll be able to buy a cheeseburger someday from making just miscellaneous content but anyway uh if you hang out with me i'm going to give you a little walk around and then i'm going to walk through I'll, through the building i kind of and then i'm going to I'm going to get down to brass tacks. I'm going to give you some kind of prices. I'm going to tell you what I paid for this sucker. And uh, let me tell you, I live here in western Washington. It's not as bad as like San Francisco or something, but it's expensive here. So anyway, let me do a little walk around. Um, I had, uh, I've got, all my bays are 12 foot wide. One of them is 14 foot tall in case I need to bring in like freaking pusher diesel motorhome. And the other two are 12 by 12, and that way I can just kind of open it up, you know, and have some good daylight. I had it facing, I have it, the doors facing north, because I had a pulled barn before, and it faced west, and the sun was so bright coming in in the summer, you had to close the doors just so you could see. And then any rain that comes in, we have a, our weather comes in from the west or southwest, and, uh, you know, get wet inside the shop if it was raining and you had the doors open. So, uh, yeah, there's my bay doors. I upgraded those windows across there. And uh, that was $1,200 to, to have that upgrade of those windows. And uh, it works good for me because I, I held them a little high. I'm 6'3". I can see right through them. It's perfect for me. And, well, it's my building. Anyway, so uh, just going to do a little walk around. So the contractor I used, he poured he poured the slab and he did the gutters and they handled the permitting and the engineering. Although I did pay for those two things over and above the cost of the building. So we're gonna go in the building after we do a walk around, around the building. Um, four foot wide man door, just like in my other shop, it was uh, suggested by my previous contractor. Good call. If you have a building done, do a four-foot man door. You won't regret it. I don't think it costs any more, and you can wheel your lawnmower in there, motorcycles, whatever. So here in Washington, they don't let you just run your downspouts down onto the ground. I had to do a stormwater infiltration system and uh, so all four downspouts had to go into drain line which is routed into a catch basin and a drain field we'll get to that a little later i got my electrical trench open right now you can see my drain line unfortunately it, the ground caved in i tried to tunnel underneath it but got my electrical guy here today dawson he's over there he's He's setting some conduit and uh, putting in a J-box running. My electrical is actually coming from a panel inside the house. So I've got that trench open. I've got all my crap in a 40-foot con rental container right now. And I'm getting ready to unload that and send that dude down the road. And then, of course, I need to, after my electrical is inspected and is past inspection, I'm going to backfill that. So there's a thing to think of. Um, your electrical is going to cost several thousand dollars. You know, you, if you can do it yourself, fine. But you still got to buy the parts and do the permitting. Um, I had to upgrade the panel in my house also. So, you know, and then when you're done, that's just to get a panel in the shop. And when you're done, when all said and done, you still got to, after you got a panel, you still got to do all your outlets and lighting and, and all that and if you like and subscribe to this video um, I'll post I'm having a loft built and of course I'm gonna do the lighting and everything also so I'll be posting some videos on that also it should be pretty good so 
again, here in Washington State, I did the site development here, uh, meaning I, I graded for the slab. I had a grade. There's a uh, about a about a 5% plus or minus grade away from the building. They required that. It was kind of hard to get here in this area. I had to scrape it pretty good and kind of create a little bit of a swale. But this is the east end of my building. It's kind of hard to get it all in. By the way, I'm not a professional YouTuber. I'm taking this cell phone. I'm taking this video with my cell phone with a broken screen, but I'm doing the best I can. I'll try to give you some information. So my stormwater infiltration system, I was able to dig that myself. The materials were about $1,500. It involves about 200 feet of, of drain pipe, a catch basin, a bunch of wash rock, and a bunch of digging, but I have a, I bought a little excavator to do this project. Um, you can kind of see here along the fence, I had to I had to cut quite a bit to make grade here. And then ultimately my site development inspector made me kind of cut a swale in here also. I've got, actually got about five feet or 5% 5 grade, 5% 5 fall away from the building. It might not look like it, but it's there. It's actually kind of a swale that runs up the middle. So, yeah, there's a drain line in the ground back here. Trying to hold steady. Again, I'm holding the cell phone here. And walking. Doing the best I can. So, yeah, my drain lines come in, come down here. They pick up, they pick up this downspout. And then they come around the corner. I ended up using a 45 across the corner here. And then a 22 and a half to get over here to my catch basin, which is about six feet off the building at the closest closest point. I went way over what they required. They wanted 18 inch diameter, four foot deep. I went 36 diameter, five foot deep, and both tight lines. So looking at the west end of the building, both tight lines come from the right and the left and dump in there and then there's like a baffle system to keep uh, solids so this is actually kind of a settling tank for any solids and pine needles and whatever might get in there and you know with a 36 inch clean out so you can get in there and maintain it little screen on the top and the bottom of the baffle in there and then it comes out it comes out this side away from the building uh, between that clean out and those two spoil piles is a trench that is four foot deep four foot wide and 15 feet long oh it has like I don't know 10 yards of wash in it and it's all wrapped in it's an engineered system I had to pay for the engineering on that it cost $900 for the engineering I guess all the materials with the aggregate and this the pipe and this this catch basin and it's just a piece of cor 36 inch corrugated pipe, but I, I guess I'm probably $2,000 or so, $2,000 plus in all the materials and a lot of hand, you know, a lot of digging with my machine and some hand work and it's, it's all bedded in, the pipe's all bedded in 5 8 crushed. So it was, it was quite a bit of work and expense. So, you know, figure... Hey, just to get a panel to your shop here, figure if you got any run to it at all. I don't know. Mine's more than this because I had to have my home panel upgraded. But figure like $5,000 to get a panel to your shop. I mean, I'm just trying to keep it real. Aim high. And if you can save on that, you know, like I say, I'm in, I'm in the, just outside the city on the West Coast in a kind of a rural area. Cause suburban area and it's expensive here it's expensive in 2023 it's expensive so figure five thousand bucks to get a panel figure three thousand dollars for your stormwater infiltration and i've got really good dirt here so i didn't have to have that big of a pit i didn't have to have that big of a drain field 
Um, okay, so let's go inside the shop now. Show you some other stuff. Permitting. So the engineering was, I want to say the engineering was $2,500. So my contractor has an administrative assistant that they use. They lined it all up. I just told them what I wanted. They did it. They did all the site development for all the... Okay, bear with me. I know it's going to be shaky. I'm opening some doors so we can see in here. It is pretty dark. I have, you know, I, there's no power in here, no lights. So, opening doors. And the door guy, well, the door guy, he sprung, he says he springs the, he sets the springs on these hot, he calls it. So, like this 14 footer, I mean, you just give it a little tug and she goes flying up which is nice, so you don't have to push it up with a stick. Yeah, maybe you do with this one. Anyway, they, the springs kind of break in. And... There you go. Okay, so there's my doors open. Now you kind of see around in here. Um, over and above the price of the windows, so I already told you the windows in the doors, in my bay doors. There's nine total. That was a $1,200 add-on, $1,200 uh, change order. The windows, six total. They're four by six sliders with screens. Those were an additional $500 a piece. I have six of them. So 3,000 bucks but they're nice windows. My contractor, a lot of times the pull, 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 post frame construction buildings, they only insulate the roof, but this building, um, the contractor, he insulates the walls also. So yeah, again, yeah, per, uh, engineering was like 2,500. The stormwater infiltration engineering was 900. The, the permitting was 2,500. So they kind of nickel and dime me out here. My electrical, just to get a panel out here, is, you know, we'll say $5,000. So I got two windows at this end. So I'm going to back up a little bit so you can see more of the building. So at this end, so you can kind of see my bay doors in there, my man doors there. So that, that end of the building, that's the east end of the building, that area is 18 by 40, and I'm going to build a loft there. And so, again, if you subscribe, you know, when, you, when I get the loft done, I'll do a short video on that also. Um, so, yeah, what else? My contractor, he, part of the deal was also that included the slab. They come out and poured the slab and finished that out. They did a real nice job, saw cut it. So I cut it everywhere. There's all the details here were, were really good. Um, he really did a nice job. So this helps like keep it from like cracking diagonally. So essentially, you know, you have, he saw cut between, saw cut between every bay. So you can see it there. And you can kind of see how he, how he kind of saw cut a Y right there. So no matter where, if a crack tries to take off, it's going to take that path of least resistance. And so, yeah, every bay is, is saw cut. Nice job, too. Real nice job. And they came in afterwards and cleaned up all the slurry and sprayed down the inside. You know, they cleaned up behind themselves really nice. And he threw me, he threw me a bunch of that epoxy, that epoxy floor cover that you put sprinkles in and whatever, you know, that real nice stuff. I think it's a, he gave me a gray, but he gave me enough to do this entire shop. I um, haven't decided whether I want to yet because I may be dragging around some heavy steel stuff and I don't want to tear it up. Um, but anyway, yeah, loft down at this end. So this building, it was uh, 16 foot tall and I didn't think I needed it that tall but I did, wanted to do the loft it gives you a lot of extra storage so the loft you know from from over there right above that the post just to the left of the man door you know all across the back and to 
this post right here, that's 18 feet. So the loft will be 18 feet and 18 feet deep and 40 feet long. And uh, so my building, I elected uh, to go with these, uh, if you notice the trusses, if you notice the trusses, I went with like the scissor type trusses that give you, I think they're a little sharper looking architecturally speaking, and they give you a little more headroom. And especially if you do a loft, they give you more headroom. But you see how wide the tails are? If you look at the end of that truss, you'll see the tails are, gosh, they're about, at the very end of them, they're about 16 inches. And so that ended up making my building, I ended up getting a 17 foot tall building. So when I do my loft, I'm going to have plenty of headroom up, you know, above and below. Uh, what else can I say about this? Okay. Um, yeah, so my electrical, yeah, I've, in that utility trench I showed you at first, I've got uh, my water is already, I had my water stubbed out. If you look out, if you look out there, just to the left of the trench, you can see the yard hydrant and how the trench kind of wise off. So my my water lines in there underneath the power, about six inches below it, all all bedded in sand, and it comes up right there. That black pipe coming out of that conduit that I penetrated through there. Um, that's uh, that's my water line stubbed out, ready to go for whatever I want to do over here. So I may end up, you know, having a, putting in a head over here in this corner. And, and over here, that's why I went, so I'm going to swing around. So that's why there's only one window on this end. Because here in this corner, there may end up being a bathroom someday. Plus, that's kind of a, where I'm going to do kind of a hospitality area. I've got some cabinets and some in a countertop that's going to go there. And then in this area, over in this corner, is where the stairs are going to go up to the loft. So they'll come up from just to the right of that that blue motorcycle and head up to a, or about maybe about where the front wheel of that, motor, that blue motorcycle is and head up about four feet tall to a landing and then cruise up and then take a left and then cruise up, come through a hole in the you know, an opening in the floor, and I'm going to build the, the railing around that. So, so no window there because there's going to be stairs there. No window there because there could be a bathroom there someday. And then, you know, point of egress up above plus ventilation up high, kind of same thing at this end. Ventilation, a little more natural light. Um, there's the machine I used to do all the site improvement. Uh, 26G, there was a fair amount of grading. It would have been nicer to, I mean, really for a homeowner, for the scope of work I was doing, and especially the trenching close to the building, um, that machine worked really well. When I was actually grading the site, it might have been nicer to have like a 50, you know. I had to, <laughs> I had to run the heck out of it, but it did it, and it did it well. So anyway, okay, brass tacks about this building. Um, this is gonna, this is gonna hurt because it was expensive. So I already told you, I already told you, you know, some of the prices for, you know, the electrical to get this panel out here and, and then, and then I'm going to have to spend a bunch on lighting and, you know, lighting and outlets and switches, you know, finish electrical, that's probably going to be, I'm just going to aim high. I'm going to estimate high. I'm going to say another $5,000. So, um, the building, and I'm going to lead into this. Let me say another little thing before I throw out this price is like, if you live in like Nebraska or something or Iowa or someplace where things are less expensive and they're more, you know, if you're in like an agricultural area, I'm sure you could freaking probably knock this in half. And if you just buy a, a pole barn kit or a metal building kit, you probably knock it in, you know, 75% off the price. I don't know. Set. But, but here in Western Washington, $87,500. There you go. Plus tax, plus my change orders, plus electrical, Stormwater infiltration, 
uh, finish electrical when we're all done. I'm on $100,000 right now, not counting all the permitting and engineering. And this building all said and done, ready to run, is going to be $125,000. And that's it. There you go. There's a, there's a bottom line. I'm sure you can do better if you want to build it yourself. I will say one thing is that I had to wait for a year. Engineering took a while. Permitting took a while. But when they were said and done, when they showed up to build the building... My contractor specializes in post-frame construction only, and they have, they erected this building in like 10 days, including the slab, done and done, gutter, slab, downspouts, and the permitting was effortless. I just had to open my wallet, and uh, I don't regret it. If you're in western Washington, I highly recommend Johnner Built Construction, J-A-H-N-E-R, Johnner Built Construction. So there you go, man. That's what I paid. Pretty big chunk of change, but freaking badass building. Okay, thanks for watching my video. Again, like and subscribe. Thank you.